bringing you key insights, tips, and advice from the brightest minds in the Canadian franchise industry. This is the Franchise Canada Chats podcast. Welcome to the Franchise Canada Chats podcast, where we take you into the world of franchising. Our interviews are with franchisees, franchisors, and industry leaders who give on the pulse expert advice and share their franchising insights and experiences. I'm your host, Stephanie. This is Season 3, Episode 7. This episode features keynote speaker and author Todd Cohen, who shares how to crush the negative stereotypes of sales in order to cultivate a team that is dedicated to the process of getting the customer to say yes. Here, Todd explains how every interaction with the customer is a selling moment, how to empower your staff to embrace their unique talents, how to redefine our culture and go beyond business recovery into business acceleration, among much more. This episode was adapted from Todd's keynote presentation titled Everyone's in Sales in Your Franchise Store as part of the Canadian Franchise Association's Business Recovery Summit Series. The month-long series of webinar presentations took place throughout October. You can learn more at cfa.ca. Enjoy the episode. Today, I want to speak to you from my heart because my message today is something that I am so passionately committed to because I believe it's the secret for all of us. And it's really not that much of a secret. It's how we start looking forward. It's how we change the conversation. It's how we change the game. It's how we go beyond business recovery to business acceleration. You know, when I think about some of the amazing organizations that I've had the privilege to work with at the CFA, the UPS store, SprayNet, the Lunch Lady, and so many more that I've gotten to know, the amazing folks over at Driver's Seat, Steve Collette. I think that you are already practicing a lot of what I feel so strongly is what we all can do to change the conversation. So let me start here. Now is your time. This is the time to hit that reset button. And that reset button doesn't mean something has gone wrong. It means we now have an enormous opportunity to change the conversation, to change up what we need to change. You know, the secret to business success isn't really so much of a secret. And I can share with you, it's not being cheaper than the next guy or faster or saying you're more efficient or getting your proposal into the hands quicker. I get all that. Here's what matters. As we talk about business recovery for every single franchisee and every member of your organization, the difference maker, the change, the catalyst, if you will, is the currency that your business now functions under. It's what underwrites your business. It's what makes you visible and it's what makes you stand out. It's that mojo that you put out there, that energy that becomes irresistible. The new currency is people and culture. Everything else, we have to be careful because as good as we are, we don't want to become commoditized. We all need to work on our visibility. We all need to work on our culture. And today, business recovery is underwritten by the currency that you all have right in your individual stores, people and culture. So let me start with my message that many of you have already heard and I've been so fortunate to bring to the CFA a number of times. Everyone's in sales. And now I know when I say that, it tends to scare people because they hear the word sales and they go, not me. I'm just the, and that right now, friends, is a gigantic red flag. No longer will we allow people to say, not my job. No longer will we accept people saying, sales? No, that's somebody else's job. Here's why we're all in sales. Here's why our culture begins, our cultural revolution, our cultural evolution begins with everyone's in sales, building a sales culture. I want you right now to think about everybody in your organization, whether you have a staff of one or a staff of a thousand, it doesn't matter. Every single person who comes to work every day and gives it what they have does something that helps a client say yes. They do something amazing every day that helps a customer achieve success. The question is, do they know it or are we 
allowing them to step back and say, I'm just the. Your businesses, your franchises, the organizations that you have put your passion, your blood, your sweat, your tears into building live and die based on how people see their contribution to your success, to their success, and to the customer's success. Think about that for a moment. It's so much more than lip service. It is so much more than checking a box and saying, yep, culture, we got that covered. Do you? If you were to go through your organization and say to everybody, you are our chief sales officer, what would their reaction be? <gasps> I'm not in sales. Sales? That's not my job. You see, every day people come to work and I believe passionately, they do not say, today is the day that I hope that I am overhead. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm looking forward to being irrelevant. Nobody truly does that. They may act it, and there's usually something else going on there that as responsible and caring business owners, we can spend some time coaching and developing. Our currency is people and culture, and everybody in your organization does something enormously magnificent and special that helps a client be successful. Have we pointed that out enough? I guarantee you, we, there's more we can do. Every time we pull somebody aside and say, listen, what you just did, what you did a week ago, a month ago, today a customer said yes. Today a customer achieved their goals. If you take the time to build that bridge, that rock solid, people preserving, retention creating, people and currency bridge, your business has no bounds. Take that to the bank. People don't wake up in the morning and say, I am proud to be overhead. They come to work with passion and energy and it's our job to connect that to the customer's success. That's what I call building a sales culture. That's what I call everyone's in sales. Again, it doesn't mean that people have to go door to door and knock on those doors and say, I'm here to sell you. Because you see, that's the stereotype. What I'm talking about is redefining our culture by first redefining people's contribution to the business. You know, when I look at LinkedIn and I see so many of my friends and colleagues from the CFA posting activity, there are a few examples that jump out at me as, wow, these people love what they're doing. Take a look at driver's seat. Take a look at what the Baisleys have built. Take a look at the culture that leaps off the page. Take a look at the UPS store. I've had conversations with so many of you and we talked about building a sales culture. And the first thing I notice is how people are showing up. They're showing up with passion and energy and that's inspiring me. It's also inspiring your customers. You can't put a price tag on your culture. You can't put a price tag on creating a sales culture. By redefining what we mean by sales and saying everyone's in sales because everybody, every single person has the enormous opportunity to impact a client's success. And you better leave today and go back to your businesses and start saying, listen, this is what you did. You know, when we create a sales culture, we do something else. We create what I call, you ready? Write this down, a culture of purpose. What's your purpose? Because when we can define our purpose, when we show people how their individual purpose makes a difference, that explodes upward and positively our businesses. It expands our culture. It makes people want to join your team. Look, right now, finding good people is a challenge. It will always be a challenge. Regardless of what's happening environmentally right now, there's not a business out there that doesn't want great people, people who imbue and live your culture. What is your culture? Is it one where we're going to allow silos and allow people to say, not my job, that's marketing's job, or that's David's job, or that's Luke's job. I'm just the? You see, that's not a profitable, healthy, business recovering culture. That's a culture of silos. That's a culture that says, we're okay with mediocrity. That's a culture where we say, not my job. Nobody intends to set that up. It unfortunately happens. And when we are in economic dire straits, for whatever reason, silos tend to go up a little bit taller. 
and they tend to become a little more solid. How do we bring down silos and accelerate business recovery? It's not by saying no silos because that's lip service. It's by our actions and our actions which must scream every day, what you do matters, you have purpose, here's how you impacted our customers' success. Let me give you an example. When I think about one of my clients, the UPS store, I think about the people who walk into their stores every day, their centers every day, every hour, and have a challenge. They have a problem. They have something which is inhibiting them from being successful. Every single day, with every single action, every single interaction, they solve customer challenges. They help enable somebody to be successful. When I walk into the store that I deal with here in Philadelphia, that's what happens. Every conversation is a selling moment. When somebody walks into that UPS store and says, I need something printed, it's an emergency, I've got a deadline, and the person behind the counter gets up and says, I can do that. That person in that moment is the chief sales officer. That person in that moment has brought down a silo. That person in that moment needs to be said, needs to be told, needs to be coached that what you did helped us help a customer succeed. That's a sales culture. That is business recovery at its finest. If we let ourselves attempt to compete in a way that we risk becoming commoditized by being the lowest price, the lowest bidder, by using old school selling tactics, we risk becoming invisible. Write this down. Invisibility means disappearance. You know, when we talk about building a sales culture, and you can see how much I believe in this, we have to talk about the fact that in every single one of your places of business, the sale begins before a word is spoken. Did you know that? You see, when we talk about changing culture, it talks about, you know, when I walk into your place of business, before you say a word, my decision has already been made. You see, the sale of you, the sale of your business, your ability to recover and accelerate and explode your profitability begins before a word is spoken. And every single person a customer interacts with in your organization has that wonderful, enormous, and awe-inspiring opportunity to put another brick in the wall of building a sales culture. Folks, we have this incredible moment right now. We can look at our business and say, everything's okay. And you know what? Right now, you might be doing great. What's it going to look like tomorrow and the next day? Because you see, complacency can be our enemy. So don't get fooled by where you are now. Be thinking about tomorrow and the next day and making sure that your culture is rebooted or enhanced to one that I call a sales culture or a culture of purpose. What are you doing to help a client be successful, to help a customer achieve their goals? You see, this is all about mindset and behavior. And you know the good news? It doesn't cost you a dime. It doesn't cost you a dime to speak with people in a way that says what you do matters. What you did, what you do, what you will do has a direct downstream impact on our customer's ability to be successful, on a customer's ability to say yes to us. Presence matters. How you show up is where the sale of you and by extension, your organization begins. And in many cases, it can end if we're not aware every single day about how what we do matters. And as franchisees and franchisors and owners and staff, guess what? Nobody is exempt. Nobody gets to sit back and say, I'm just the. Because when you have somebody who exhibits that terrible, I'm just the disease, it's not a reason to take punitive action. It's a reason to coach them up and say, this is the culture we want to have. This is the culture that is about our customers and their success. And you play a role in that. And this is how. That's how we make the cultural change. That's how we either evolve or begin that revolution. 
There's not an organization out there today that shouldn't be thinking about these things. Now, I'm often asked, okay, Todd, you always say everyone's in sales. You always say sales is a stereotype. It is because you see, we all sell every day and here's how. Some of you have heard me talk about my very simple selling formula called ELSA, E-L-S-A. ELSA is how we all sell all the time. It's how we change the culture. It's how we engage with each other. It's how we bring down those silos. And it's how we scream every day. We're different because we understand as an organization, together we're helping our client be successful and we can articulate it. So what does ELSA stand for? Some of you may know this. The E is for engage. Everybody engages every day, whether it's in person, and I hope we're going to see a lot more of that eventually, whether it's by text message, not so good, whether it's by email, tired of it, whether it's by Zoom, whatever it might be, we're all engaging. When we engage, our customers perceive us in a split second, a certain way. That's the presence that I speak about. That's making a conscious decision. How am I going to show up? Am I going to have a smile or a frown? Is my body language going to say stay away or is it going to say approach? You're in a safe place. You've come to the right place. And guess what? I have your back. The L is for listen. Don't worry about talking. Don't worry about fixing. Don't worry about making everything right, worry about being present and listening. Your customers are coming to you, they're panicked, they're upset, they're anxious, they're fearful, and they're tired. We're zoomed out, we're tired. I need somebody to listen. If you wanna sell more, you need to engage more. That isn't sales tactics, that's cultural tactics. The S is for make a suggestion. Every single one of you who is listening in knows that there's one thing that you could have should have, would have suggested to a customer or to a coworker and didn't. Why? Were you anxious to get to the next thing? Were you not present? Were you unengaged? Or were you thinking, I don't want to feel salesy? Guess what? Get rid of it. If we're going to create a sales culture, a culture of purpose, your customers are expecting you and want you to make a suggestion. Suggest something to me that will help make me more successful. If you can do that, I'm all ears. And once you've made that suggestion, you know what the A stands for. Ask. In my second book, Stop Apologizing and Start Selling, I speak to the notion of the sales apologist. This is the person who's earned the right to ask, has developed a good relationship. The person walks into your place of business and knows they're in the right place. They're open to your suggestions. And we don't get that business. Why? Because we didn't ask. Elsa, E-L-S-A, engage, listen, suggest, and ask. We all sell every single day. Right now is your time to step back, take a breath. Don't stop your activity. Don't stop the good things that are happening. Now is the time to take a look at our culture, our people, the currency that underwrites our businesses, the currency that we need to continue to bank. Your people and your culture are your key to business recovery. It's not about getting cheaper. It's not about giving more away for less. It's not about cheesy sales tactics. It begins with how are you showing up? It begins with embracing what I have been saying for 12 years. Every conversation is a selling moment. Every conversation is an opportunity to create an image in your customer's mind that says, I'm in the right place. These folks have my back. I feel comfortable here. I feel like I've made the right choice. Far too many organizations across all spectrums haven't figured this out yet because we're, they're, try, they're too busy trying to compete on things that don't resonate. What resonates is how you show up. What resonates is making sure that in COVID-19, in a time when we're all panicked, in a time when our stress levels are high, in a time that we have never seen before, I want to know that I'm in a safe spot. When I walk into my UPS store, I know I am. When I, if I were to hire any one of the franchisors that I've worked with, I know know I'm in the right place. From my heart to your business, now is your time to not just hit the reset button, 
because there's no shame in saying we have to reset. Now is the time to ask yourselves this very simple question. Does everybody on my team understand their purpose? Do we take the time to show them 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes? Do we take the time to show them what you did, what you do matters? We can't afford turnover. Retention is expensive. Turnover is expensive. Our businesses need people. How do we connect? By showing people how they matter. By building a culture that says, you're in sales. You represent us. People make snap decisions based on how you show up. I'm asking you to find your cultural center. I'm asking you to take a deep breath. Find that place where you can truly and authentically look around and say, they get it. They understand that what they do matters. When you can do that, friends, you will be on your way to not just business recovery, but business acceleration, business explosion, because your people and your culture will always be the engine that gets you there. Find your cultural center. Everyone's in sales, ladies and gentlemen. Build that sales culture, think about that culture of purpose, and go forth and slay the dragon. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more franchising resources, including how-to articles, expert advice, franchisee success stories, and franchise opportunities, visit FranchiseCanada.online. You can also learn more about franchising at cfa.ca and can connect with specific franchise opportunities at lookforafranchise.ca.